It's 11 o'clock, so I guess we'll get started. Let's see what happens when I press play. All right, when I press play, I think I'm going to have no control over anything. So um, thumbs up if you can still see the functional group. OK, great. OK, functional group update, May 1st, 2017 for the front end. So we've had some, uh, this is first the accomplishments. The teams have split, uh, but the front end is still considered one team. We still meet uh, all in on Tuesdays together, um, but we're just splitting the um, some of the uh, teams. So team AC, which is Tim's team, which is Prometheus Marketing Platform and Edge, um, which the biggest of those should be platform and marketing. Uh, and Team DC, which is discussion and CD. So uh, the four teams, uh, Edge and Prometheus are currently small. So that's why you can have the four teams and the two teams together. It's because discussion and CI and CD are uh, large. So some other accomplishments, um, things that are out of the box. A lot of people have already talked about the features that are going in this release. So I'll talk about some things that we're doing that are a little bit out of the box. We've done some non-code file renders, uh, which is what GitHub calls non-code file, non-code file viewers, uh, which is just basically anything that's like a binary or something that's not code um, and ways to view them. So we've uh, this month we've added XML, zip, and DXF. They're still in review. Um, but people really liked the sketch file uh, viewer and the other viewers that we created. So I figured I'd add a couple more. Um, the review process is improved uh, for view because not everybody is an expert on view this moment. Um, we're, we have a special process to make sure that everybody writes view uh, in the way that we want them to. And we've also improved the docs uh, for view. Uh, which you can check out on the front end docs uh, in docs.gitlab.com. Um, we're currently testing out splitting MRs um, for the merge request widget. We split it. We split that MR into. Uh, it turned out to be an enormous merge request, so it wound up being split into fifteen different merge, smaller merge requests. Some parts of that were a pain, um, but other parts of that were really good. The parts that were really good was for the merge request reviewer. Uh, people like me reviewing smaller merge requests, and then you can really focus on that individual amount of code, which just helps tremendously. Um, so even though it's a little bit of a pain for uh, the people writing it, uh, I think that's just a little bit of a growing pain. It's new. It's something we have to get used to. And so we're going to try it again uh, to see if we can uh, make code reviewing a little bit easier. Um, and we are now writing all view in these dot view files. Uh, what that does is it allows us to write HTML. Uh, we're not putting CSS in there, but you can put CSS in there. And um, we don't want to do that because we already have our giant CSS framework uh, that is already in place. So whenever people write new code for the front end, they really shouldn't have to write any CSS at all in theory, because all the CSS for GitLab has already been written. Um, but with these dot view files, you can write the template in HTML, you can write the JavaScript, and then you can import those dot view files and they get turned into compiled JavaScript, which is a lot faster than um, having to render HTML. And they're also, uh, currently you can also in your Sublime Text or your Atom editor, they do get syntax highlighting. Uh, I think we're working on getting syntax highlighting for them for the diff uh, previews and for the repository uh, views. But those .view files make things a lot faster because then you have everything kind of in one file. It's kind of neat that way. Some other accomplishments um, in the box, instead of out of the box, real time is taking off. We're uh, working on a lot of real time uh, features right now. And it's working really well. And it looks really good. and it. It's just really cool in general. Uh, the merge request widget is going in. And for this, I said we split the merge request widget into multiple smaller uh, merge requests. And we have documentation uh, for that that is, uh, it, I don't think it's in that yet, actually. I think it's coming up. 
Um, and then once we get the scheduled pipelines in, this will allow us to schedule cross browser testing with browser stack. Um, the reason that we're using browser stack is because it'll allow, allow us to not have to create uh, a virtual machine to test uh, things in IE and then you can test all these things at once. So it is one thing that we're using that is not open source, but that is an external um, service that we're using, but it is also going to help us with stuff like cross, cross browser testing, which we've been wanting to do for a really, really, really long time. And we really, really, really need to do it. Um, and there's not any easy way to do it uh, on our own. It would just cost a tremendous amount of money to get tons of VMs. And then to test on things like tablets, you'd have to have um, what, what some people call a device lab, where basically you have a room that these devices are sitting there for people to use them. Um, and, uh, you know, the virtual machines that they create for these devices aren't exactly uh, a one-to-one -one situation because sometimes they're inaccurate. And a lot of the stuff you're testing is like the performance. Does it crash the browser um, on those mobile devices? And that's something that you can only find out if you test on a real device. And that's something that um, browser stack will allow us to do. So that's what we're going to use browser stack for. And we're going to run that nightly uh, on a bunch of different browsers. We're going to start it off with IE 11 because that's what we support. And we want to see if we can just catch any of the IE 11 things, which I'm sure we're going to catch a lot of because we currently don't test it uh, very well. Um, some concerns, uh, we currently over schedule um, the bad and the good of this, the bad. Um, we've always overscheduled. However, we're scheduling more and more each release. Uh, it's more than people can complete and it's more than people can handle. Uh, the good is that I'm now able to help out with deliverables thanks to Tim. Um, and some other concerns is that we aren't officially testing IE at all, even though we say we support it. But the good is that we're adding, adding in browser stack testing for IE and other devices to catch cross browser uh, problems. Some other concerns is that testing is a huge time killer. Uh, the bad is that tests can take over 80 minutes and have to be retried many times over. And this is exhausting for uh, developers. Uh, Luke has a great point here, which he wrote in this merge request. He said, I'm completely and utterly tired of wasting my time uh, chasing pipelines. And I'm also sure that it costs us a crap ton of money, or he said a crap load of money to run failing uh, builds continuously. This is a real issue that we either need to solve or uh, have a process for because I've never wasted so much dev time in my life than trying to do, uh, trying to get other builds that I haven't touched to pass. And I'm sure that's not just for his own builds. I'm sure that's not just for other builds. I'm sure that's for his own builds. Um, and I think that that's uh, a really good point is just that tests are a major thorn in our side at the moment. Um, there's a lot of um, and I know that people are working on the uh, transient failures, as we call them. The transient failures is where something's just failing, and it's not a legit reason that it's failing. I know that we're working on those, um, but currently, it, the point is that we we waste a tremendous amount of time, development time, and like emotional time, if you know what I mean. Uh, meaning, like the the uh, people have a certain amount of reserve when they're doing stuff like this. And that reserve runs out very quickly when you have when you get very frustrated uh, with tests. Um, plans: We're not hiring right now. Um, uh, we have a plan. We have the plan to make GitLab faster. One of those things we're using is .view files. Code splitting is uh, where you make sure that only the code that is needed is put into certain is only put into where it's needed. So you only load the code that you need. And Webpack can do this. We just have to take the time to do this. And we're starting to Ajax, not all the things, but we're starting to Ajax more things. So the link that is in here is for the deploy keys, where I took the deploy keys uh, part that was written in view, and oh, sorry, it wasn't written in view, where it was loading all at once. And we just make an Ajax call to load the deploy keys, which for some people, they have a tremendous amount of deploy keys. And so we can do this, and the page will load immediately. Uh, and that helps out people a lot. Um, and so anything that's slow, we as a first step, we can probably make an Ajax call to get the data after the page is loaded. Uh, we're also writing a lot of cool features that people love. Um, so that is uh, a link to the docx viewer. Uh, I'm just one of my goals is to just see if I see how many things I can support uh, in GitLab different 
types of file viewers um, because you know one of the things that would be really great if we could just keep people in GitLab and have them viewing stuff uh, on GitLab. So I wrote a docx uh, viewer kind of on the side um, and we're trying to make development faster and easier as fast and as easy as we can. Um, and so anything that we can do to make the development easier uh, we're going to make sure that we do that. Um, so does anybody have any questions? Let me get out of this thing and let me look at the, let me stop screen sharing. Let me look at the chat. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so DocX will be huge. Um, it currently works, um, but it's also a work in progress because I looked at the DocX file specification and there's like literally thousands of things that I'd have to support. But if we just go for the very basic things, um, then I think that will cover a lot of bases. Um, and yeah, the, the, the new blob viewer architecture is what's helping us uh, write these uh, non-code file renderers a lot easier. Um, collaborative editing uh, to replace Google Docs. So this is something that I've been looking at like <laughs> nonstop. I, I can't stop thinking about this collaborative editing. Unfortunately, it, fortunately, it's really cool. Unfortunately, it's a little bit of a difficult problem to solve, which is why uh, it's a thing called ops. Well, one way of doing it is called op operational transformations, and it's quite complicated. So I think that we have to come up with a way that is not complicated, and we just have to dedicate time to it. But as soon as we dedicate time to it, I'm sure that it's something um, that we could solve, and I'd really love to solve it. It's a super cool thing. Um, Right, and the back end needs to prepare for something like that. Um, do, 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 do. And what is the weirdest supported file format in one year from now? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> I don't know what the weirdest uh, supported file format would be. If you can think of any, I'm telling you that DocX was one of the most fun things that I've ever written in my entire life. Because if if you know anything about programming, you know that DocX is like the devil. It is uh, not something that you want to just like dive into. Um, and this is probably like the fifth time in my life that I tried to do it. Um, fifth time was successful still. Um, maybe, maybe like 3D renders or something. I believe GitHub now does that. that. That would be pretty cool. We do have 3D renders. We put that in. Oh, of course we have that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the cool thing is that, so it's called an STL file, and it's the 3D printed. The thing that people use for 3D print, where DXF and DWG is the 2D and STL is the 3D, we can support even more 3D type of files like OBJ and... Um, I can't remember what, oh, Collada files are, I don't know if people still use Collada files. It's been a million years since I've looked at 3D stuff. So um, the last time I looked, they <laughs> did Collada files. Um, yeah, 3DS. Uh, so the cool thing is, is that we're using a library called 3JS and 3JS um, helped us support uh, STL right out of the box. So it was, it was very, it was pretty easy to do it. Um, and, uh, <laughs> we, not that we want to do this, but we tested it with a 23 megabyte uh, STL file and it worked and it was smooth and it was great. Um, I think the blob rendering that Dower wrote will stop it at five megabytes, but it does work. So it's very cool. Uh, is it documented somewhere? What are all the file formats that we support? Because we should document it. Yes, we will be. Uh, but at the moment, um, the uh, only, oh, and we put in IPython which the only, I think we are on par with GitHub right now. And then once the uh, DocX and um, DXF and ZIP go in, then we will be beyond what they have for non-code non file viewers. So that's pretty cool, um, which it wasn't particularly difficult. So, you know, we can do anything. Um, PSD. Yeah, PSD. PSD is known to be the worst file format on the face of this planet, um, uh, from what I've heard. Uh, there is, so we wanna make sure that anything that we render, um, that we 
get it. If, if it's a visual thing, like if it's a thing that artists use, <laughs> then you want it to be pixel perfect. Um, if it's a docx thing, then it doesn't have to be perfect because it's not like a, you know, it's not a thing that somebody drew and they're expecting it to come out exactly as they drew it. Um, although they are for docx, but just not as, um, so PSD is uh, something that we have to be very careful with because it, it's either got to be perfect or not. And that's where the sketch file thing worked is because we actually just took the image that's stored in that sketch file and we pulled it out and we show it. So we're talking to the sketch people right now. We have a contact in sketch um, thanks to uh, Dimitri from UX and we're talking to him and trying to see if they can give us all of the uh, previews, not just the current layer for sketch files. So um, yes, so that's that. Um, but if anybody has any ideas, there is, uh, I don't know if Dimitri's on this call, um, but there, and I'll link it somewhere. I'll link it in something. We have, um, we have a list of uh, things that we want to support. So if you have any ideas for things that you want to support, I'll, I'll link it in the general channel, um, the list of non-code file renders. Right, we can do anything. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? Cool. Well, thank you so much, guys, and have a great rest of your day.